My colleagues in Thailand have just brought out a Mandarin edition of this uh, book, written by me some years ago, The Right Not to Be Criminalized, so that's now available in China in uh, Chinese Mandarin, it's been translated. I've been asked to uh, say a few words about this uh, book for that purpose, for its launch in Chinese in China. The book was written some years ago and it was looking at the idea of fair criminalization about developing objective constraints against governments just running um, with public outcries and over-criminalizing people and putting them in prison and giving them criminal records, uh, putting them through that criminal justice process which is quite daunting. If you're taken in on any sort of charge to police station, you can be strip searched, you can be grilled, you're living in fear that you might go to prison, you might get a criminal record, and even a short term in prison um, for something you've not really done wrong, such as being homeless, um, is unfair and it's, 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 it's cruel and inhumane to be using the criminal law for that sort of social problem which was, a, uh, at the time I was writing the book, um, homelessness was being cracked down on in England. It was a uh, issue. Around that same time, there's a famous case in the United States of Lawrence in Texas, where um, a homosexual couple were criminalized uh, because of their status of being homosexuals. And the US Supreme Court struck down that law and said it was against their fundamental right of um, personal autonomy. Uh, they used the word privacy and, uh, and sort of developed the idea that there's no good um, reason in, in that state or in, in the country, the US, to be making that a crime. But it's a very broad concept, harm, and when we're trying to look at harm or offence, the two ideas developed uh, in a very nuanced way by Joel Feinberg in the 1980s. We see they come in extremes. So we have genocide or terrorism, war crimes, one extreme of very harmful conduct, but we can go right down to a trivial insult that could really upset people. We had the recent um, issue of upskirting in England and Wales where a, a woman ferociously um, fought a, a good campaign and had that criminalised. If you're the victim of upskirting, it's a, a violation of your right to privacy, but what sort of harm is that? Is it serious harm? Probably not, but it is it's, it's gross, it's wrong, and deserving of some punishment. Why do we not just leave that to tort law or private law and allow the individual parties to sue each other, even though it's a minor harm? Certainly not up there with murder or rape or genocide or those very serious harms or serious economic harms. It's less harmful than that, and, and there's some harms that are covered by contract law that are far worse in terms of economic harm. But we have to have the criminal justice system uh, working in these cases for the simple reason private justice, leaving to the parties resolve between themselves, even though we might say it's not a very serious harm, it's wrongful, it's gross, and it deserves some sort of deterrence. Um, would be too expensive. So private justice in England and Wales is open to all, as is a Ritz Hotel. You need big money and you need to be able to fight a case through the civil courts and it is a lot of work, it's traumatic, it requires immense resources and if you lose a case, which you can quite easily do, legal cases are lost all the time by people that probably should be winning them on the evidence and the facts, um, you'll be paying the costs, the legal costs of the other side. It could be hundreds of thousands of pounds. So if you're a victim of upskirting and you're trying to sue the person who's done this for compensation, you need a lot of money to be able to do that. You might also find once you get there, this person has no money, you're not going to be able to get any compensation. So the criminal justice system cuts in on these harms at this lower level when we can see it is objectively wrongful, needs deterrence, because it acts as a public insurance system. It's ensuring even the poorest people in society have some sort of protection against these sorts of wrongs and don't have to have immense resources to seek compensation in the private justice system. So it's akin to the National Health Service that we all pay in, but the police can prosecute these cases, do the investigating, put up the public resource, 
and we only need a few prosecutions to deter most people. And so that's the idea of the divide here between criminal law and private law and why even some minor harms have to be left to the criminal law. And it could involve someone who's committed some minor harm facing quite severe harm by going through the criminal justice system, being strip searched, put in prison, getting a criminal record. But that's the cost um, people pay when they do breach the criminal law. Thank you.